Hello, I'm Dr. John Mills. Today I'm going to talk to you about academic register, or the ways in which academic discourse differs from other types of discourse. All language takes place in some sort of context. The broader context we call genre. Genre has to do with the context of culture. Texts which share the same genre have the same purpose. They share the same obligatory and optional elements. Examples of academic genres include lectures, essays, reports, seminar presentations, conference presentations, etc. Texts which share the same genre have the same purpose. Here are some examples of purposes for using language. Narrative, to tell a story as a means of making sense of events and happenings. Recount, to reconstruct past events and incidents in the order in which they occurred. Information report, to present factual information about a class of things, usually by classifying them and then describing their characteristics. Discussion, to present information and opinions about more than one side of an issue. Explanation, to explain why things are as they are, or how things work. Exposition, to advance or justify an argument, or put forward a particular point of view. Procedure, to show how something can be accomplished through a series of steps or actions to be taken. Texts which share the same genre share the same obligatory and optional elements. Here is an example from an information report. The paragraph begins with a general opening statement or classification. Droughts are extreme water shortages that last for a long time. The report continues with a sequence of related statements grouped in topic areas. Rain falls at a different rate in different areas of Australia. Droughts occur when the average rainfall drops below what is expected for that area and stays there for an extended time. What would be normal rainfall in Alice Springs would be a drought in Sydney. There are more droughts in the drier areas of Australia than in coastal areas. The inland areas have more dramatic changes in rainfall. Droughts from the past can be seen in the rings made on trees as they grow wood each year. In wet years the layer of wood is thick. In dry years the layer of wood is thin. And finally the paragraph ends with a concluding statement. No one can predict when droughts will occur in the future. The narrower context is the context of the situation. We call this the register. Texts which share the same register share the same experiential, interpersonal and textual meanings and have shared patterns of lexicogrammar. Register is concerned with things going on in the world outside the text, which make the text what it is. These extra-linguistic features are given substance in the words and grammatical patterns which speakers and writers use to construct different varieties of text. The situational differences are classified by three aspects of the context, the field, the mode, and the tenor. The field is concerned with what is being talked or written about. It is the subject matter of the discourse. The field includes the long and short-term goals of the text. The mode 
is concerned with the kind of text that is being made. It is the channel of communication. For example, is the discourse spoken or written? If it is written text, is it handwritten or is it word processed? The tenor is concerned with the relationship between the speaker and hearer, or between the writer and the reader. It is concerned with the participants and the relationship that exists between the participants. For example, supposing a policeman is giving evidence in court. He might say, the defendant appeared to be drunk. Drunk means that the defendant had consumed too much alcohol. Alternatively, the policeman might say, the defendant appeared to be inebriated. Inebriated also means that the defendant had consumed too much alcohol. Both drunk and inebriated refer to the same state of affairs. In other words, they have the same referential meaning. However, inebriated is a more formal word than drunk and therefore more suited for use by a policeman in a court of law. Whilst inebriated and drunk share the same referential meaning, there is nevertheless a difference in interpersonal meaning between inebriated and drunk. The policeman might have said the defendant appeared to be pissed. Pissed also means that the defendant had consumed too much alcohol. However, pissed would be inappropriate in this context since it is slang. Some dictionaries even this describe this word as taboo. As Patricia Bizzle writes, producing text within a discourse community cannot take place unless the writer can define her goals in terms of the community's interpretive conventions. Features of informal writing style include contractions, personalization, lack of cohesive conjunctions, very simple sentences, repetition, exaggeration or hyperbole, vagueness, overgeneralization, value judgments, direct questions, proportion of verbs to nouns greater, colloquial expressions, and phrasal verbs. Contractions are a feature of informal writing. In informal writing, we write, there, it isn't, it doesn't. Whereas in formal academic writing we write, they are, it is not, and it does not. The personal pronouns I, you, and we are frequently used in informal writing. Whereas in formal academic writing we tend to avoid personal reference. In informal writing few connectives are used. Whereas, in formal academic writing, cohesive conjunctions such as therefore, nevertheless, and as a result, are frequently used to help to guide the reader through the ideas being expressed. In informal writing, simple sentences consisting of only one clause are common. We might write, John Smith is American. He is a novelist. Whereas in formal academic writing, complex sentences containing subordinate clauses are common. We might write, John Smith, who is American, is a novelist. Or alternatively, John Smith, who is a novelist, is American. In informal writing, we use repetition of ideas and words, such as more and more. Whereas in formal academic writing, we would use a word such as increasingly. Hyperbole or exaggeration is common in informal writing. Informally, we might write, it's incredibly difficult. 
whereas in formal academic writing we avoid hyperbole and instead write, it is difficult. Informal writing is characterised by vagueness of words and ideas. Words such as things and do are common, whereas in formal academic writing, precise expression of ideas is required. Overgeneralisation is a common feature of informal writing. Formal academic writing avoids overgeneralizations. Informally, one might write, everybody can read and write nowadays. Whereas in formal academic writing, one would write, the ability to read and write is normal nowadays. Informally, one might write, the French always drink coffee for breakfast. Whereas in formal academic writing, one would write, it is common in France to drink coffee for breakfast. Or informally, one might write, smoking leads to death. Whereas in formal academic writing, one would be more cautious and write, smoking may lead to death. In informal writing, Value judgments are frequently made, and words such as must, should, ought to, good, bad, better, and worse, are common. Formal academic writing is more objective. Value judgments are also made, but much more carefully. In informal writing, direct questions are sometimes written, such as, so what shall we do? In formal academic writing, such direct questions are avoided. One would instead write, it is important to consider what needs to be done. In informal writing, the proportion of verbs to nouns is higher than in formal academic writing. Informally, one might write, people lack what they need for basic life. Whereas in formal academic writing, one would write, people lack the basic necessities of life. In informal writing, informal expressions and slang are used. These are avoided in formal academic writing. Informally, one might write, a lot of, or lots of. Whereas formally, one would write, many. Informally, one might write, a hell of a lot of, whereas formally, one would write, a great many. Informally, one might write, anyway, or by the way, whereas formally, one would write, furthermore. Informally, one might write, and stuff, whereas formally, one would write, etc., Informally, one might write, no way, whereas formally, one would write, on the contrary. Phrasal verbs are common in informal writing. In formal academic writing, phrasal verbs are less common. Informally, one might write, put up with, whereas in formal academic writing, one would write, tolerate. Informally, one might write, come out of, whereas in formal academic writing, one would write, exit. Formal academic writing uses technical terms. Thus, instead of writing lung, formal academic writing uses the technical term pulmonary. Pulmonary disease is the academic way of writing lung disease. So, to recap, Register consists of the field, the mode, and the tenor. So, for a lecture on abstract expressionism, the field is abstract expressionism. The mode is face-to-face, -face, written in order to be spoken. And the tenor is formal, lecturer to students. That concludes my talk. Thank you for listening.